G'day cobbers, <laughs> welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Alps 4 Driving, we're going to put together a set of very heavy duty jumper leads suitable for the most sophisticated 4 wheel drive using nothing but hand tools. Stick around to the end of the video because we'll show you how not only this can be used for jump starting your car, but welding as well and how to protect your electronics. So, let's get into it. So firstly, we'll run you over a couple of bits and pieces you'll need in order to pull this DIY project off successfully. We'll start with the wire. We've got 10 meters of 50 millimeter cross-sectional area welding wire. The great thing about welding wire is it's made to flex. It's very high multi-strand. It's also got two layers of insulation there, which is great when it comes to abrasion resistance. We've also got a spike guard here. So that protects your computer internals from spikes. And we'll discuss that later on, how spikes could happen when you jump starting a car. Cable lugs and Anderson heat shrink of various sizes and diameters, and we got the clamps here. They're actually welding earth clamps, and we're gonna modify them a little bit, applicable to our situation, and a little bit of sheath guard there as well, a bit of nylon sheath guard, running over a couple of these tools. So a shifter, <laughs> always gonna use it, the old adjustable wrench. That's a hydraulic crimper. That's actually a wire stripper for large diameter wires, which works great, and there's a pair of cable cutters. And if you're after bits and pieces, most of the common stuff and the unusual tools like the Cripper are linked down below. Full disclosure, they're Amazon affiliate links. So whilst it won't cost you any more, the channel will get a kickback and we'll be able to produce more content like this. First up, let's start stripping these wires so we can get the end lugs on. Before we strip it, of course, we need to cut it in half because we need a positive and a negative line. So we'll get our cable cutters and we've already marked out where our center line is and now we got two pieces of cable okay you can see how easy it is I'll be chopping through that with a pair of sideies for ages but the uh, actual cable cutters do a really nice job okay let's start stripping the ends so first up with a large cable like this you probably want to square it up a little bit so we'll bugging in the old cutters nice and square and give it a little bit of a trim Okay, now we've grabbed our lug. This lug will fit onto our clamp. Now this is a flared type lug, 50 millimeter to suit the 50 mil cable with an eight mil stud hole to fit those clamps. All you do is you line it up to the depth you want it to strip and put a little bit of a mark there. Okay, then you grab your stripper. Now these strippers are great. What they have is an adjustable blade in there all you simply do is adjust the blade to about 95% of the depth of the insulation and that way we don't touch the actual multi strands of copper in there because when you touch the copper with the blade well unfortunately it's going to nick the copper and that's a fatigue point a point where it could break that copper off and sometimes it's unavoidable but uh, we try and avoid it okay so we'll just put this one around here run it once around Back it off that way. Now it's managed to grab the top insulation but it hasn't grabbed the bottom one. So that's when you grab your knife. <laughs> and try and keep it off as best you can the copper underneath. There we go, neaten it up a bit, and then we test fit, and it should be reasonably hard to get all the strands actually in. The flared end helps, and now you can see that's a nice tight fit. Let's get to the crimping. Now when it comes to joining cables to terminations like this lug here, a lot of people really prefer the crimping method. Now it's fast, it's easy, it's clean, but the problem is you need the right size cable and the right size lug, and then you need the right mandrel these are interchangeable in your, this case, hydraulic crimper. Now this hydraulic crimper is available from all your likelies. So eBay, Amazon, your local tool outlet. Reasonably easy to use, very affordable. And if you're going to do a bit of crimping, worthwhile investment in my book. So we've already got this pushed on there nice and properly. All we simply do is put the termination into hydraulic crimper we make sure it's turned on all the way to make sure the hydraulic pressure shuts those jaws together. And 
and when it's grabbed hold of it, we make sure that wire is pushed all the way in and then we just keep on pumping until we can't pump anymore because it becomes solid. There we go. Then we back off the pressure a little bit. Give it a turn, a little bit of a turn to the next section. So, uh, sixth of the turn. Let's keep pumping. There we go, nice and solid now. That's a solid two grunts. <laughs> okay, and as you can see, that's a nice crimped solid connection and that's not going to pull out now if you are interested in the differences between crimping and flood soldering and various other methods of joining wire to terminations drop a comment below and i might be convinced to do a video comparing the electrical resistance the vibration resistance and the mechanical properties of the different joining methods anyway so this is our termination all we need to do now is put a little bit of heat shrink over the top now when it comes to putting on a bit of heat shrink it is important to get the right heat shrink. Now this is glue line double walled heat shrink. So it shrinks a lot more, it shrinks down about three to one. And the glue actually pops out the end and provides a moisture proof and dust proof seal. So water and grit and rot and yuck doesn't get in there and start corrosion in your joint, hopefully. All right, so I'm gonna use a heat gun, but you can just as easily use a flame. I've used a stove before, so let's get it done. And that's it, simple as that. And if I zoom in a little bit, you'll probably be able to see the glue starting to leak out the edges there. And that way you'll know you've applied enough heat. So now it's ready to put onto our clamp. So as you can see, these cable clamps come with a hole to poke the wire through. So I've done that with this one. And I've taken the nut off the end. So we'll just put the termination on the stud there. Put the washer on. Put the nut on and then wind it home. Now, they're only copper, so probably copper plated to be honest. So you don't want to lever off it or run the impact on it. Just make it nice and firm. And that'll do. Now, because this is a positive, it's going to have lots of exposed edges, which could make contact with the chassis of the vehicle and cause a short. So I wouldn't mind doing a little bit more insulating to try and avoid that from happening. So I'll cut an extra couple of bits of the heat shrink. I'm going to heat shrink them on to the handles here. Okay. So now it's a little bit warm. <laughs> We've successfully completed one end. Now I'm going to do the other ends, but I'm not going to subject you to watching me. <laughs> so I'll get back to you in a minute. So I've finished all the terminations, but before I put all the handles on, what I want to do is make sure that these stay together. Now you can just use pieces of electrical tape, wind it around, move on, or even zip ties. But I've got some heat shrink here, so I'm going to use that. My well, first one's going to be about 50 centimeters back from the termination and I'll do that periodically right down. So we'll get the first one done. Now with our first one down, I'll keep going every 30 centimetres or so right to the other end and then we can put the sheath on. So now I've paired up that cable with that heat shrink roughly every 40 or 30 centimetres. Next one is the nylon sheath. So this is an extra layer of protection and I've run a rope right down the centre of our nylon sheath in order to help us pull it through. So all I'll do now is get the end we want to push through and put a bit of tape over it. 
We want to make sure nothing will get caught. So don't be shy with the tape. And especially the end here, make sure there's no bits and pieces hanging out. So we get a smoother ride down that nylon sheath as possible. And a tip for young players is leave a little bit hanging off the end, fold it back on itself. That way the end will be nice and easy to find once you pull it out the other end. Because my eyes aren't 20 years old anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we can pull that through the other end, but I'll do that away from the camera because uh, the field of view for this camera isn't about 10 meters long. Now with that done, we can secure the ends with a couple of bits of heat shrink. Okay, that's not going anywhere. We'll get the other side done. So now I'll put a bit of heat shrink on both the positive and negative. I've inserted the positive. Now I'll put the negative, you've got to be mindful when you're connecting Andersons, the negative or the black side goes into the negative. Obviously the red goes into the positive. And we'll just see if we can push that home. And that can be a bit of a bear. Now I'm not going to pretend that was easy <laughs> because it wasn't. There was lots of grunting and possibly blasphemy. But what we're after, you'll be able to hear a click when they go over the little spring at the back there and you'll be able to see that the tangs are almost right to the end and they won't be able to pull out beauty okay this half's done now let's have a look at the other half now any modern vehicle you want to use some sort of spike guard and the one i'm using today is the projector any sort of inductive load with the vehicle and that we're talking about things like alternators um can produce spikes in the tens of volts so it can produce anywhere up to 100 volts of spike and that's going to damage things with integrated circuits like your stereo or even your ECU which controls the engine things like that they don't appreciate spikes that high so what we're going to do is we've got a spike guard here and you can buy this as an accessory you see it's got a positive and a negative here so you line up the positive the positive and they've got spikes in them to penetrate through the insulation and into the cable itself so all we do is line it up push our negative on first and we can push our positive on and we put the back on and drop a couple of screws in it Beauty, that's done. I'll put a little bit more on this one. Rightio, bumper over the top. Get it the right way around, Simon. <laughs> there you go. Rightio, now I am going to put a little bit of heat shrink up here just to keep the ca cables nice and neat, but that's effectively job done. So, as I say, the proof is in the pudding, which is in the eating. Let's go out to the car, which happens to have a flat battery at the moment due to my negligence, and give it a crack. Now the spike guard actually has multiple purposes on your vehicle. Firstly and primarily to protect your sensitive electronics from spikes when you're jump starting your vehicle. Then tell your state of charge of the battery, high, medium or low, whether it's bad or good. And finally, if you're welding on your vehicle, instead of taking your negative terminal off, you can actually put your spike guard in between your positive and negative and that will protect your sensitive electronics from spikes when you're welding righto so we've got 12.8 volts in this good battery so this isn't the dead battery this is a good battery and we'll hook up the negative terminal positives already hooked up and you can see it's all illuminated there let's head across to the cruiser now which has a very flat battery in it and we'll check out that one now you can see the very sad state of this battery here. so pretty much no voltage coming out of there this is a current clamp and you can see the state indicator of the battery no good so i'll plug in the zook now which is running in the background and you see we're all illuminated up there we've now got 14 volts going into the battery and i'll go and give it a kick in the guts job done
And there we go. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. If you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.